Hello, you're watching Andy's channel and it's Cameron back with a solo video. This is even a sequel to one of my previous solo videos. I did one, I think my second video on this channel, which was called Make Things Happen. Stuff just won't happen if you want it to, you have to go and make it happen. And I touched on a concept in that where I distilled the entirety of like male female dynamics in dating to guy initiates, girl decides. And I really wanna double down on this as kind of like an explainer of how guys who get laid a lot get laid a lot, you know? The difference between guys who absolutely slay and guys who passively float through life and take what they can get. The difference is really down to guys who put girls to decisions, guys who are more assertive, guys who are always looking for the girl to make a decision on him, whether or not that is, you know, the green flag we can go, or it's a rejection, which allows them to then even move on or, you know, put it down to trying again later. This is fundamentally what Andy and I are big on when it comes to your dating approach. Like we are very big on the numbers game. We're very big on being upfront and honest with your intentions. It's all about, I don't know, it's not all about efficiency, but it is to some degree about your efficiency with the numbers game. Like you are gonna have to do a certain amount of, you know, lead generation. You're gonna have to then, you know, screen the leads that you get to see if they're going to provide you with what you're looking for out of the dating market and putting girls to decisions as to whether or not they like you enough to sleep with you or form a relationship with you is really 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 important super important you know it is it's really on coaches like myself and Annie to figure out what are the sticking points that new guys get that newbies get especially when we're trying to make more general content content to help guys who watch these videos but also we get like you know less experienced guys come into the coaching, you know, they want to lose their virginity. They want to increase their dating from a level they didn't see was very good. Guys who've only got like, you know, under five lays in their life. They've Maybe they've only had a couple of girlfriends and they didn't really do much to get those girlfriends. They sort of just happened. And guys who have had a lot of dating experience where the relationships just sort of happened, get out of those relationships and they're like, okay, how, do, how the hell do I, do I make that happen again? because she kind of did all the moves. There are rare instances where girls will make moves on you, but I think it's a terrible dating strategy in terms of the quality you're gonna get, or if you're into quantity, you wanna get a lot of lays, or you wanna get like multiple women at the same time. It's a terrible dating strategy to wait for the rare instances where girls make moves on you. Because it is unfortunately, or no, I don't even think unfortunately is the right word there. It's just gonna be rare. It's rare in the way that male and female dynamics work. And I think it's incredibly silly to plan your dating life. If you want an abundant dating life where you have options, where you get to choose who you're with, it would be silly to plan your dating life around that happening. So we want you to be a lot more assertive and we want you to be making the girl make decisions, you know, the girls that you end up on dates with. We're definitely trying to get guys away from the worst instances I see of this, which I call floaters. And I think like, it's sort of not quite this, but I've seen that the red pill have a term which they call beta orbiters, which is these guys, you know, they, they're basically trying to use the friend zone as some kind of like stealth way into a relationship with a girl. The biggest problem with the floaters is like, it's not even that they don't have a chance with these girls. It's that they don't, they're not gonna do anything or make a move. And maybe one out of 15 girls you try this on eventually gets with you because, you know, familiarity, breeds attraction, eventually breeds, you know, some kind of feelings from that girl. It's just not a very efficient or it's not a good tactic. It's just not a good strategy, obviously. The other ones we see are a bit further on from there. So guys, they're not they're not floaters. They they're able to ask girls they're interested in out on dates. They're able to go on Tinder, you know, and you know, pitch, ask for a girl's number and pitch a date, go out on a date. But then on the dates is where they fall down. It's on the dates that they're failing to put girls to a decision. It's on the dates where they're not, you know, they're not doing the things that are gonna have the girl be like, yes, I'm gonna have sex with this guy because he's not asking for it. Like he's not saying, do you wanna come back to mine? He's not physically showing that he's interested and girls can get a little bit, I mean, girls want you to show interest, like just acting like you don't have a dick and acting like a platonic friend for three dates and then you wonder why the girl stopped talking to you. It's like, because you didn't make an effort. You didn't try. She put a, she doled herself up. She put herself in a position where you, she thought you would make a move and then you never made a move. She's going to think that she didn't, you didn't find her attractive. Like, why would she keep going on dates with someone who 
when she's interested and you just want to be her friend. You know, it's like, it's one of those things where I feel bad for girls when I hear stories about guys who just didn't, like they just didn't take a hint and didn't make a move when the girl obviously was interested. And I think it's not on girls, in my opinion, to make those moves, maybe in like some kind of egalitarian utopian society where we you know expect girls to do the same sort of shit that men do, they would be making like 50% of the moves, but that's just not the reality or social constructed world that we live in at the moment. So you have to like fucking, you know, stand up as a guy and be the one that makes the moves and be the one that, as I said, initiates. You initiate, she decides. I'm gonna keep repeating that. So what are the causes of like this? We can have a look. So the big ones are gonna be like fear and anxiety. Obviously guys are afraid, you know, to hit on girls in the first place, tell girls that they like in their lives, that they're interested in them. I get that, I do. Uh, there's an amazing approach anxiety program that Good Looking Loser wrote that we recommend a lot. That's great for getting over just the fear of telling girls that you're interested, cold approaching as we call it, or even warm approaching is more scary in my opinion. You know, like there's social, potential social problems that come out of that. Um, if we're looking at the dates, it's like, I had this when I was like a fear of escalation because I didn't know what I was doing. So like, I didn't know like how to like make out with a girl. I didn't know how to escalate physically to that. I didn't know how to make a move to make out with a girl, that kind of stuff. Uh, the fear of touching women. Like I think a lot of guys have like, when they're inexperienced have that. I definitely did. So I get it. A lot of it's like fear and anxiety. There's very little you can do except for exposure therapy though. There's very little you can do of going in there and realizing that failure and rejection aren't that bad. Like they're, they, they're bigger in your head than it actually is. If you go in for a kiss and a girl turns her face to the side and doesn't kiss you, it's actually not as terrible as you as it, as it sounds like it is, you know? In your, if you go out and we wanna try this stuff, especially in like night gaming, night scene stuff, when you like, you, you have to be making moves like that, you're gonna realize that that happens quite a lot and you just have to get used to like, you know, that feeling, get used to rejection. That's what the, the, the approach anxiety thing is there in part because like, yeah, you're getting over your anxiety, but a lot of girls are gonna reject, reject you in the drills, like high fives, you'll get rejected. Like girls won't talk to you when you like ask them where, like you ask girls for directions and they won't talk to you. You'll get weird rejection reactions, even though you're not approaching. And it's really important that you attempt to initiate and get rejected. So you realize it's not that big a deal. Like learning to deal with rejection is as big a part of this as learning to get over the fear of initiating, of, you know, showing your intention. Those, there's two kind of things, yeah? The getting over the anxiety and the fear and then dealing with rejection. You're also gonna have to deal with it going well. <laughs> That's another one I didn't expect. Like de dealing with things going better than you expected and then you get more fear coming up because you know it's actually going well for once and you can't just like shut some people can't shut their minds off and just enjoy it like they start like you know over analyzing also even during sex you see guys over analyze like how well the sex is going are they making mistakes so yeah it, things the fear can build the anxiety can build i want to get circle back though to like the point of like making her make a decision on you good looking loser had this really good article which basically said opportunity means nothing and he was talking about this time where he had like he had his hair cut by play like a future playboy playmate like this really attractive girl and she seemed interested in him and basically he just went there and got his hair cut and just kind of reveled in the female in the interest from this incredibly hot girl but like he said that what he learned later on was that doesn't mean anything. The idea of like this opportunity, like all these girls, like potentially being interested in you doesn't mean anything. What means something is actually, you know, having the balls to make a move, like actually inviting these girls on dates, actually taking that date back to yours. That's the other thing as well. There are lots of guys out there who have a lot of opportunity. You have a lot of girls who are interested in them, but they can be lazy or they can be too nice, or they can be just generally scared and full of anxiety and fear. And you can beat those guys, even if you're not as like attractive as they are, you can beat guys who are more attractive than you by being assertive, by being the guy that actually goes and takes a shot, you know? You miss every shot you don't take, as Gretzky said. And a lot of these, a lot of guys out there, very attractive dudes are missing a lot of shots that they could have otherwise taken because you know they don't know this shit. They, they just kind of go down the passive route. And I would rather see guys who are not quite there that yet with their image maybe, and you're still working on your look, just still working on your fashion, but I'd rather see you 
like mopping up these opportunities because you have the, the lack of fear and the lack of anxiety that you've trained yourself on and you have the ability to put girls to the decision on you and you could be just as much of a yes as the the, the more attractive guys but they're not going to go for it and you are and you're going to get the yes and that's what the guys who get laid a lot understand it's about you get like bonus points for actually having the balls to take these fucking opportunities. So I want to go into a bit of detail on some of the like actual occasions where this plays out. So we're big on being direct on approach and being honest on approach. And like part of that is, you know, just being upfront. Don't don't go in with the whole like pickup artist, like indirect um, or oh, like your style kind of thing. Go in with the, hey, I think you're cute. Are you single? Can literally be more direct than that. You could obviously go for like, hey, you're sexy or hey, you know, something a bit more like, uh, what's the word? A bit more crude in the in the wording, but like, hey, you're cute. You're sing how are you single? That's good enough. Um, and then you know, this is the beauty of a direct approach. You get a more definite answer pretty quickly. So usually they'll just say they're not single, or they'll just decline talking to you. So you get a very fast rejection. This allows you to play, you know, the, the game a little bit more high volume numbers because you've gone in there immediately direct. And that's the idea. Is like this is the numbers game approach. This is like you're screening hard as well. Like. If you ask a girl, she's single straight away, you're kind of screening in more sexually available girls if they say yes. And this also gives you more of a chance to get good at dealing with rejection because this approach, obviously, you know, you get blown out quicker a lot more with this than you would with, say, an indirect approach where typically, you know, that just kind of turns into a friendly conversation a lot of the time. And the idea of indirect approach is you start with a more friendly in and then you like escalate to a more sexual conversation or more like that kind of conversation. Whereas direct starts that way. And that's kind of the whole point. Yeah, you're gonna get really good at screening and learning how to deal with rejection using this style. The next point mentioned was escalating on a date, you know, fear of like the, the not knowing how to do it, being afraid to do it. So physical touch is always good if you if like comes up naturally, like more organically on a date. There are lots of guides around this online, but there seems to be a massive trove of like video creation and guide creation is like how to escalate, how to escalate to sex, all that stuff. I typically view like anything that involves touching hands is good. Like, especially if you're sitting across from a girl in a bar or, you know what I mean? If you just start like, you know, touching hands. I think Ross Jeffries, like really long ago, there was a pickup artist called Ross Jeffries that was like big on the grab her hand and stare into her eyes move or something. But yeah, anything that like, like touching her rings, like pointing out her rings and stuff like that. Like just kind of like the girls, there was a, there's a meme about like how girls at school do that whole like, oh my God, your hands are so bigger than mine thing. Have you ever seen that? And I've literally pulled that one out before on dates. Um, Andy doesn't like sitting across, I know. He likes sitting side by side. And if you're sitting side by side, yeah, there is more opportunity to like be physically ask, physically touching a girl on a date. I don't have a hard rule about this, but there have been dates where I start opposite and then I move side to side. Like I'll move, if she's sitting on a, if it's going well and like I'm sitting on a chair and she's sitting on like the back bench or whatever, I'll like at some point switch over and sit next to her. What physical escalation on a date does is really like gauge whether or not she's reciprocating, you know? Like if you, if you go to grab her hand and she like pulls away, then like obviously that's not very reciprocal. Um, girls can be like, you know, very like standoffish with touch and obviously, you know, respect the, the like the signs you're getting back. You respect it. They don't want to, you know, do that stuff. And so, yeah, we don't actually recommend like making out and stuff like that on a date. I actually much prefer the next thing I'm going to talk about, which is inviting them back first. So I will do like, you know, touching hands, that sign of physical escalation, a verbal escalation as well. Like I do try and move the conversations more towards like sex and partying and stuff like that. Um, and then, yeah, at the end of it, if I want to, I will focus on inviting back from that date. And we do push a lot of our guys to invite back on first dates just to get used to doing it, just to get used to the idea that you can do it. We want guys to be comfortable inviting girls back. And it's very simple. Like you, if, you, if you're drinking together, you just say, hey, I've got some wine at my place. Do you want to come back and split the bottle? Have wine at your place. Very good for this. A lot of guys don't really, if they're not drinking, they'll go for like, do you want to come back and watch a movie at mine? You know, Netflix and chill. It does sort of work if she's into you. Anything works really if they're into you. If they're into you, they'll come back. It doesn't really matter what like basic... Um, excuse to come back you go for but it seems to work better if you say something that isn't along the lines of do you want to come back and fuck so yeah typically you go for like hey do you want to come back and share some wine do you want to come back watch a movie it the subtext is really understood 
by any by everyone in that situation it's not one of those things where we need to be like you need to be direct and tell her exactly what you're going to do and lay out the entire sex capade you're going back for no you just say like yeah let's go back for so and so reason and yeah this is one of the ones like this is the main thing i want you to just, guys just work on doing yeah just going for the ultimate like hey do you want to come back to mine thing as early as you can into the dating experience so like on the first day if you don't feel comfortable you can push it to the second day i understand it is one of those things some guys invite them straight to, to their place first day. And I, I mean, I'm not the biggest fan of that. We talked about that in a previous video with Andy. But of everything on here, direct approaching and inviting girls back on dates, those are like the two things that are going to like stand, make you stand out from the more passive men out there in the dating market. You're really going to stand out for being more direct. I've even seen like, I've seen on like hinge profiles and tinder profiles girls asking for guys to be more direct they're like like that whole like what there's a prompt on hinge which is like how to get me on a date and i've seen a, more than one girl just be like just ask me be direct you know like there is definitely a willingness out there from girls for guys to be more assertive and you're gonna stand out by being more assertive and taking the lead this is how guys who get laid a lot get laid a lot they actually they take their shots they understand the opportunity doesn't really mean anything unless you take it, okay? You have to initiate and she has to decide. I hope you guys have enjoyed this video. I'm gonna leave it there. Peace out till next time.